What's up, y'all? My name is JR, and for those of you who don't already know, I'm a huge movie and TV nerd. If you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. I hope you'll consider sticking around and joining the film community I'm trying to build here on YouTube. So, in today's video, seeing as how we're about halfway through the final season and we're due for what looks like it'll be a long break, I've decided that I'm going to talk about the Star's hit series, Power Book 2, Ghost. And why the show doesn't work as well as the original from a narrative perspective. And just so you guys know, this video will contain spoilers. So if you haven't gotten around to watching this series yet and you don't want to know anything that happens in it, you might want to exit this video now. And with that being said, no more wasting time. Let's get into it. Power Book 2 Ghost or simply Ghost, is an American crime drama television series created by Courtney A. Kemp that premiered on September 6th of 2020 on the Stars Network. The series is both a direct sequel and spinoff to Power and follows Tyreek navigating his new life in which his desire to shed his father's legacy comes up against the mounting pressure to save his family. Along the way, Tariq gets entangled in the affairs of the cutthroat Tejada family, adding further complications as he tries to balance his drug operations with his education, love life, family affairs, scrutiny from local and federal law enforcement. The show stars Michael Rainey Jr. reprising his role from power as Tariq St. Patrick, the son of James Ghost St. Patrick and Tasha Green St. Patrick, who is slowly following in his father's footsteps as a drug dealer. Now, in December of 2021, the series was renewed for a third season, which premiered on March 17th of 2023. In January of 2023, ahead of the third season premiere, the series was renewed for a fourth season. And on March 14th of 2024, it was announced that the fourth season will be the series' final season. And it's split into two parts. Part one premiered on Jan June 7th of this year. And part two is set to premiere on September 6th, again, of this year. Now, at the time of the making of this video, the series has an audience score of 84%. It doesn't have a meta score on Metacritic as of now uh, because it doesn't have enough votes. Uh, but it does have a user score of 6.5, and that's based on only 17 user ratings. And finally, it has a 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb with almost 12,000 ratings. Okay, so... Those of you that have been following me for a while know that I think Power is the best urban crime drama ever made. Um, and that includes The Wire. Um, yes, I think that Power is better than The Wire. And don't y'all come at me about the two shows being different and therefore incomparable because that's not a thing. Um, I, I had to explain to some people when I made my Power video a while back that even though Power is an action driven story, while The Wire is character driven, um, you absolutely can compare the two because uh, they're being compared in Hollywood all the time. Right. Uh, if I submitted the script for Powers pilot episode and the script for The Wire's pilot episode, both of them would go into the drama category. And guess what? They would be compared to one another. That's just how it works. So even though the shows have a different tone, I understand you can absolutely compare the shows. And. As we come up on the mid-season finale of Power Book 2, um, and we're due for that long hiatus, um, I thought um, this would be a good time to drop a video about why I think the show wilts in the shadow of its predecessor. Now, the first issue is its sequel slash spinoff status. Power Book 2 isn't its own story. It's actually Power Season 7 through 10. Um, it literally continues the original story of James St. Patrick, without James St. Patrick, and that's a major issue in and of itself. Now, the writers and the showrunners try really hard, in fact, to shift the POV of the story to Tariq, but that's problematic too, again, from a narrative standpoint. You see, Power worked because Ghost as a character worked. He was a drug kingpin who made good and wanted out of the game. And in addition to that, he was being pulled in two different directions by the two women that he loved the most. Omari Hardwick also had the acting chops, the edge, and the charisma to pull off the show's enigmatic lead character. 
And those are the main reasons why power was such a success and such a dynamic story. Now, Michael Rainey doesn't have any of those things working in his favor. Uh, you know, acting wise, you know, he's just not there yet. And that's not really a diss. He's still a young actor. And I believe that if he keeps working, he'll get there. But Tariq as a character doesn't make you pull for him because he isn't someone who had to sell drugs to make ends meet. He was a rich kid and a spoiled kid who got his sister killed and murdered his own father for the right to be a drug dealer, which plays completely differently as the story struggles to continue without its original lead character. Another big problem the show suffers from is one of longevity. Because the show picks up in the immediate aftermath of the events of power, your brain doesn't really have a chance to create that break between the two shows, like you can say, for example, with Raising Canaan. You know, Raising Canaan works because there's a break in the timeline. And as a prequel, the show basically basically serves to answer questions specifically about Kanan and Jukebox and how they became the characters that we saw in power, even though at present um, both characters are deceased, um, as opposed to Power Book 2, which simply poses more question about Tariq and his future as it moves along. You know, a character that becomes more and more unlikable with each passing season. And the truth of the matter is that most shows don't have stories that are built to go on for 10 years, mostly because the characters start to become weighed down by all their choices over time. And eventually we, the audience, long for a resolution of some kind. And this is proven here by the show's ever dwindling audience going from approximately 700,000 viewers per episode right after Ghost's death in season one of the show to now having barely over 200,000 views per episode, which is likely why, why this is going to be the show's last season. I always tell people that typically speaking, whatever show comes first in a line of successor shows will likely be the best. Because if the show manages to get a sequel or a spinoff, it usually means that it was a really good show um, by one metric or another. And the Power Universe is no exception to this rule. Power had the right actor playing the right character in the right story at the right time. Essentially, all of the big decisions in that show worked out, which is a minor miracle in and of itself if you know anything about putting these shows together. And because of that, James St. Patrick, also known as Ghost, will become iconic uh, if he isn't that already. But whether he is or not, what he certainly is, is a hard act to follow. And we watch every episode of Power asking ourselves how many people Ghost would have to kill so that James St. Patrick would never have to kill again. That's what the hook was. The thing that we watched every week so that we could try to figure out. And though we indeed watched power week in and week out, hoping that Jamie would eventually get on the other side of all the bad choices he made as a young drug dealer on the unforgiving streets of the poorest part of the big rich town that is New York City. It feels like we watch power book two, hoping that Tariq won't. But what do you guys think? Are you all caught up on power book two ghost? If you are, do you like the show? Where do you think it stands in the power universe? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you that might be new to the channel, be sure to like and share this video. If you really like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. Also, be sure to go and check out themadscreenwriter.com for more television and film reviews and info on my upcoming film projects. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I got screenplays to write. And I'll catch y'all in the next video.